Okay, so in this video, we're finishing it up 3.3 and, or module 33. And so it says matching the graphs with the rational functions with two vertical asymptotes. So first let's find this guy's vertical asymptotes. Then let's find this guy's asymptotes. And so then let's look at here. So for negative three and three. So for f of x, we're looking for negative three and three. So b could be a contender. D could be a contender. And f could be a contender. Now let's look at what else we have going on here? Where's the horizontal asymptote, okay? So for here, the degree of the numerator is one, the degree of the denominator is two, which means you have the case where the numerator is less than the denominator, which means the asymptote is at y equals zero. So B has that asymptote, D does not have that asymptote, and F has that asymptote. So both of those are actually still contenders, B and F. Now, what's the difference between them? Okay, a couple of things. One is if I plug in a number here in this region, notice here I get zero or a negative. But if I plug in a number and I get a positive, then it's probably F. Another way to look at it is if you plug a number in this region, if you get a positive, it could be B. But if you plug in a number in this region and you get a negative down here, it could be F. So let's go ahead and plug in the number one, okay? If we plug in the number one into our function, we either need to end up with zero and the answer is B, or we need to end up with like one point something or another and the answer is F. So let's see what happens when we plug in one there. So two times one minus two over one squared minus nine. We get two minus two over negative eight. Zero over negative eight is zero. So we plugged in one for x and we got zero for y, which means it's this point here. So B is the answer for f of x. So f of x is actually the graph B. Okay, now let's look at g of x. We established that the asymptotes are negative two and one. So here's negative two, here's one. That means that a is a contender. Here we have negative two and positive one, so c is a contender. And here we have negative two and positive one, so e is a contender. b, d, and f are not because their as vertical asymptotes are at negative three and three. Okay, now we're going to look at the horizontal asymptote. The degree of the numerator is zero, and the degree of the denominator is two. So zero is less than two, which means we automatically have a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So a is still good, c is still good, and e is still good. So now we basically come into the part where we have to plug in some numbers to figure out what's going on here. Now notice the differences here. When you plug in zero on A, you get zero. When you plug in zero for X, up here you're going to get a positive value. And when you plug in zero for X, you're going to end up with a negative value. So really, if I plug in zero, that should help me to decide between A, C, and E. So let's plug in zero into our g function. So seven over zero squared plus zero minus two, I get seven over negative two, which is negative 3.5. That means the point here is um, zero for x and negative 3.5. Well, here I have zero, zero, so it's not going to be a. Here I have zero and a 
positive x value or y value, so it's not going to be c. And here I get 0 and 1, 2, 3. Looks like it's a little bit off my graph, but I do get a negative value. So the answer for g of x should be e. Okay, and so make sure that on your graph, you're just basically looking for the signs of each of those values, okay? Um, these may have been halves, one, two, and then three, um, but I could be off a little bit. So that's how you'll do them. You'll verify the asymptotes, then you'll verify the um, points. If they're off a little bit, plug in a number and see which one of those graphs has that value. If you have two that match in that value, then plug in a different value and then see if that distinguishes between the two. Okay, this is the second to last topic that we have in module 33. So it wants me to graph this function with more than one vertical asymptote. So same as before, take your denominator, equal it to zero, So I have two vertical asymptotes, which means I need to pick numbers that are to the left and to the right of each one, okay? So to the left of two, I'm gonna pick zero and one. In between them, I'm gonna pick three and four. And then to the right of five, I'm gonna pick six and seven. Now I've gotta plug all of those numbers <clears throat> into my graph, or into my function. So fraction negative 10 over x squared minus 7x plus 10. And I get negative 1. I get negative 2.5. I get 5. Okay, so then, and then the horizontal asymptote, the degree of the numerator is zero, the degree of the denominator is two, I have the case where it's less than, so the asymptote is automatically at y equals zero. So that means that here I'm going to have my horizontal asymptote at two. I'm going to have my vertical asymptote, 3, 4, 5, and 5. I'm going to have another vertical asymptote, and then 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have negative, or 0 and negative 1. 1 and negative 2.5. 3 and 5. 4 and 5, 6 and negative 2.5, 7 and negative 1. Now this should be enough, but if your graph gets confused right here, you may want to pick another x value here, like, um, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 3 and a half. So if I do 3.5 store x, I get... 40 over 9, which is approximately 4.4 repeating. So 1, 2, 3, 4.4 is probably about right there. So really, the graph should be doing this when you hit the graphing button. It should look like a parabola up there in the middle. Okay. But if it starts to look like a line or anything weird, the graph should know the graphing tool inside Alex should know that that's going to look like a parabola. But for me, I just plugged in another point just to be sure in the middle. Okay. Let's go ahead and try another one. So we're going to find our vertical asymptotes first. So 
So then we have a chart, and we've got to pick two numbers to the left, negative 1, negative 2. Um, two numbers, actually, I mean, that's fine. But negative 7 is, is further to the left, right? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and that's the vertical line here. And then you have another vertical line at x equals 0. So I do need um, two points, negative 8 and negative 9 to the left here. In the middle, you can pick like um, negative 6 and 1, negative 1, just to get close to this and close to this. And then maybe 1 and 2. And so let's plug all of those into here. So negative 8 store x, and then fraction x squared plus 6x plus 9 downstairs x to the third plus 7x squared. Oh gosh, what is that? That's like negative 0.4. Oh, that's like negative 0.2. Now you have to type in the fractions when you're typing in it and Alex. Hit the little button that has the little x and then type in the x coordinate and the fraction here to get the, the point plotted for you. So you would type in negative 6 and 1 fourth, but for me, I know that that's about 0 0.25. Here you would type in negative 1 and 2 thirds, but for me, I know that's 0 0.6. You would type in 1 and 2, or just plot that one. That one's easy to plot, right? And then here you would type in 25 over 36, but I need the decimal. So it's about 0.7. Okay, so for you, you can type in the fractions, and it'll graph all the points for you. For me, I have to actually put them in here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's see, actually let's make this bigger. So this is gonna be one and negative one. So that's like half is 0.25. So for negative eight, I'm gonna have um, negative 0.4, so about right there. For negative nine, I'm gonna have negative 0.2, which is about right here. For negative six, I'm gonna have positive 0.25. For negative 1, I'm going to have positive 0.6. Then for 1, I'm going to have 2. And for 2, I'm going to have 0.7. Oh, this is wrong. That's 1. So this is 2. And then 0.7 is about right there. There we go. And then I still need my horizontal asymptote. So the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 3. I still have the case where the numerator is less than the denominator. So I do have a y horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So then when you plot all these points, it should graph it for you. So I can tell that this side's gonna go like that. I can tell this side's gonna look like this. Your computer will automatically know what's happening here. Um, I don't know what's happening. So I'm going to pick a point. I'm gonna pick some other points so I can really figure out what's going on. So I'm actually gonna pick um, negative 0 0.5 and I'm going to pick um, negative 5 point or 6.5 so I can figure out what's going on here so I know whether or not it's going upward or downward and so I know what's going on here whether it's going upward or downward okay so let me plug those numbers in real quick negative 0.5 you don't have to plot these on your graph because your graph will automatically know what's happening and it'll graph it for you. Um, I just don't know what's happening. 
So I have to actually plug it in. Okay, so at negative 0.5, I get 3.8. So it is going upward up here. And then for negative 6.5, I got 0.6, which means that's actually higher than what I had for negative 0.6. So this one is also going upward like that. Okay, see, and I wouldn't have known just by looking at that. I had to pick some other graphs, some other points on the graph. Alex knows, and it'll plot it for you. Last topic here is writing the equation of a rational function given its graph. Okay. So we've got two examples here. This is one, this is the other. Now, the first thing you need to do is decide how many vertical asymptotes it has. Since I have two vertical asymptotes, I know that it has to be either this one, this one, or this one, because there's two factors for the denominators there, okay? Here, there's only one factor for the denominator, so it's not going to be these two options, because that would only give me one vertical asymptote. Now, the horizontal asymptote. If it's at zero, then I know that the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. Here I have x squared, here I have no x's. So this would be a case where the horizontal asymptote is zero. Here I have x, but x squared at the bottom. So here I would have a horizontal asymptote of zero. Here though I have x squared over x squared, which means I have the same degree. And that explains why the horizontal asymptote is not at zero. It's at one, two, three. So I know automatically that I have this case here, and I even know what that a value is. Okay. Not only that, is I know what the asymptotes are. So 1, 2, 3, 4. If it's negative 4, this is going to be x plus 4. If that's positive 3, this is going to be x minus 3. For the top, these are going to give me my x-intercepts. Since I only have one x-intercept, it's x, one, two, three, plus three. But because it's only one, I'm not going to have a second one. It's just going to be the same one squared, which explains why it just touches and then comes back off if from the knowledge we know from polynomials, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now here, I have the same options. I have to select which one. So I do have two vertical asymptotes again. So I know it can't be one of these because they only have one denominator factor. It has to be one of these three because there's two factors in all the denominators. Okay, so I know that my denominator is going to be, um, that's a positive one, so x minus one, two, three, four, five, six. So x minus six. Now, here you do have um, an asymptote at zero, which means I'm not going to have the same degree in the top and the bottom. So it's not going to be this choice here for this problem, okay? It's gotta be either one of those two choices. Now I do have an x-intercept, and because I have an x-intercept, I do have to have a factor in the numerator. Since it's my, uh, positive 3, I'm going to have x minus 3. The only thing left to figure out is what that point is. So this should be my equation, but I don't know what that number is. And there's an easy way to figure it out. Use the extra point that they give you. Okay? So if I plug in this point here, I'm going to get negative 2 for y. 5 for, that's going to give me 2 here, 5 for x is going to give me 4 there, and 5 for x is going to give me 1 here. So this becomes negative 2 equal to 2a over 4. If I multiply both sides by 4, I get negative 8 equal to 2a. If I divide both sides by 2, I get negative 4 equals a. So the equation that they want here is y equals negative 4 x minus 3, x minus 1, 
and x minus 6. And it would be this option since that's the one that looks like mine. Remember, the numerator, this one here, has no x-intercepts because there's no factors in the numerator. And it only has one vertical asymptote. Here, you have one x-intercept, right? And you have um, one vertical asymptote. Here, you have no x-intercepts because there's no factors in the numerator, but you have two vertical asymptotes. Here, you have one x-intercept and two vertical asymptotes. And here, there's a couple of possibilities. You can have two x-intercepts and two vertical asymptotes or one repeated x-intercept and still two vertical asymptotes, okay? So it just depends on the situation of what, what you're going to have there, okay? And that is the end of module 33.